morning guys, Teddy here, welcome to Teddy Games. So Ketchup is a lovely company, not sponsored, and they do make a lot of very good games. And a lot of their games follow this very, very simple concept. I've decided that this year I'm going to make a single game every single week of this year. It's going to be a very, very tough stretch, but this week's game is very ketchup -y. It's very basic, it's very one-clicky. So, whenever you're ready, we'll begin. So before I give you the rundown of how I actually made this, let's take a look at what the game looks like. Incredibly simple, nice colors, very pixelated style. Not for everybody, but for me, I kind of like them sometimes. Gameplay is incredibly basic. You just tap the screen, you throw the knife, you hit the orange. If you hit the orange, your points go up. If you hit a duck, you lose. 10 out of 10. Best game, PewDiePie 2017. First things first, open up Unity, let's switch it to a 2D environment because that's the environment that we are naturally working in whenever we do Android apps. Of course you can make 3D games, the downsides of that is that it actually drains the battery a lot. That's basically it. And of course frame rate may drop depending on what type of device you're using it for. Next up we want to choose our platform. I've chosen Android because one I have an Android license and I also have an Android phone, making it incredibly easy to make Android games. I personally use Unity Remote 5, an app on Google Play that lets you test your Unity project without having to export it. Very handy and I would recommend it to anyone who was working with mobile environments. So everything's hooked up now and we are ready to make some assets. Using Hexels 2 I created a few pixelated sprites using some images as reference. In Hexels you can actually animate your sprites which is very very handy so I threw a few animations onto the ducks of course it's only two frames you know and there are only about three pixels that change between the animation but we can still use that. When we import everything into our Unity project of course we want to set the filter to a point filter. This means that we get the nice crisp edges that pixelated sprites often have. Now we have some things to work with what else do we need? Well we need sound don't we? I use this program called BFXR which is basically a small little program that makes 8-bit sounds. You can play around, you can get randomized sounds pick the ones that you like and also edit everything you want it's really really easy now, obviously the core of every game is success and failure so basically I just got sounds for those two success and failure just in case I was going to add some buttons I actually made another sound for the click sound and you can tell it's the click sound inside the game because I actually use it whenever you throw the knife it just fit really well and felt really good now we want to go ahead and create our scene our scene is going to be very very simple for my scene I decided to go with a blue background because I wanted these ducks that I made to actually be in the water of course the ducks I created naturally had a reflection because I wanted them to be in a water sort of environment so I picked a very watery color not naturally watery it's kind of greenish it's like green seas you know basically the way I made the background color was changing the background color for the camera itself very very simple chuck all the sprites into the scene resize them to the size that you want and of course you are going to now add some components that is necessary for the actual game object obviously a lot of these things need to move well they don't have to move but in my game they do move so for every single one I added a collider object and of course a rigid Rigid body 2D. Because we are working in a 2D environment, we want all our physics and stuff like that to be part of 2D. So make sure when you're using colliders to use 2D colliders and of course 2D rigid bodies. Now of course with the ducks I want to program in some movement and of course it's just left and right movement. Very very simple. In a script sense it's basically changing directions every time it hits the side of the screen. This includes flipping the actual sprite image so that it looks like it's facing the direction of its actual movement. The way you can do this is by checking if the target position is actually greater than or equal to your current X position. Well, that's for horizontal movement anyway. All I did was duplicate all the ducks there so that they form a very nice line. And by default, when I started this, they were actually all going at once. We'll work on that a little bit later. Right now, we want to get that knife movement. The knife moves forward. If you guys don't know how to do movement, it's basically this dot transform position is equal to vector two dot move towards give the current position, which is this dot transform position, give your target position, and of course, give a speed with it. Epically easy. I just made the target the orange that I put on the top, and so the knife can continues to move towards the orange. Basically the way that we trigger this is by touching the screen. Whenever we touch the screen it's going to call an instantiation which basically spawns the knife on the bottom of the screen and it works its way up the top. For those who don't know how to actually detect whether or not the phone is being touched then this is going to help you very much. Within your update function go if input.touchCount is greater than zero. This basically makes sure that the touch count is greater than zero. <laughs> This basically makes sure that there is one or more fingers on your device. Now we want to create another condition which is basically input.getTouch0. We put that in because that is the first finger that hits the screen. Dot phase is equal to touch phase dot began. The purpose of this is trying to get which part of the touching process you are at currently. Of course we put touch phase dot began which starts the moment that we touch the screen. After we touch the screen we obviously hold our finger there which is touch phase dot stationary I believe. If we move it is touch phase dot moved. 
and if we release it is touch phase dot ended within the condition you can just put whatever function you want to call in my case it was to instantiate the actual knife in the correct position use it to your heart's content you're gonna have a lot of fun with that one but this is all well and great but we're missing a very core component Collisions. Now the way I detect collisions was basically through the objects themselves, so if the ducks were in it, I created scripts for the ducks that basically had this little method in it. Void on collision enter 2D. Very, very useful function. Very, very useful because it can detect when things touch each other. Now we want to get the collisions that happen with the actual knife. If it touches a duck, we lose. If it touches an orange, we win. If it touches an orange, spawn some orange wedges. If it touches a bird, spawn some feathers in the game. This is seriously one of the coolest functions. I really recommend that you guys actually get into collisions because they do make a lot of sense and they kind of really cool and that's about it we have a full game almost ready to play but of course there is a little bit more progression that i want in there and the way i do this is by creating arrays now the ways that you can see it working with this game is the speed of the knife could decrease which makes it a lot harder to actually hit the target or we could do something where the ducks progressively come in you know one at a time as you start to get further and further along with your points so the way i did this was really cool i created an array of ints which was basically set score lines to increase difficulty if your score was ever equal to a score on this board, it would actually start to increase the difficulty by introducing another duck using, of course, instantiate method. So let's say our array was full of numbers like 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Every time the score was one of those numbers, it would use a function to increase in difficulty, and the increased difficulty function basically just spawned another duck in. It's a very, very easy way to create progression, but it works. It's much better than it not working. Networking, not working. Mm. Finally, as part of scores, there is of course a high score, which is saved using player preferences. The way to do this is to use playerpreferences.setInt, which basically sets a score on your phone's kind of memory. It's basically just a little piece of information that you can grab at any point, but it stays on their phone. It's a great way to keep things like high scores because every single time they come back onto the app, they're going to see their best score, and of course they can work towards beating it, or not, it's up to them. Of course, before the game actually starts, you can actually display high score, you display something that says tap to play so that they know to tap to play and that my friends is how i came up with the game holy duck <laughs> in all seriousness it was very very easy and took a little under an hour to actually get the finalized product out there but beforehand i was actually experimenting with different sorts of movement types and swipes on the actual screen before i settled down on the idea of creating a one-click game it's the beauty of game development you don't know how things are going to turn out you can have a set path but there will always be changes about it and hopefully you guys end up creating a very cool game if you end up creating cool games Join me on Discord, go send me some messages on Discord, show me your games, show me your projects, all that type of stuff. It's really lovely to see you guys um, taking the things I tell you and, and making stuff out of it. It was really cool. Of course, if you want to follow me on other social media sites, you can go, of course, do Twitter and Facebook. Other than that, you guys have a lovely week, and I'm going to see you guys next time for some more Sea of Thieves gameplay, uh, because interesting things happen, and that game's actually really, really cool. I want to play some more. At ease, soldier. Go grab some breakfast or something. Grab a bagel. Enjoy.